I traced a trail of stars, it led me straight to your heart. And the gravity is gone when I'm with you. We can fly away and land right on the moon. Lost in a melody, I'm falling steadily. I feel your heartbeat, I feel your heartbeat next to me. You rescue me, the music is calling me. Will you come along with me? There is no gravity, there is no gravity. And you feel it too, I see it in your eyes. Tell me, darling, why are you afraid to fly? And the melody is calling out our names. Close your eyes and let it carry you away. Lost in a melody, I'm falling steadily. I feel your heartbeat, I feel your heartbeat next to me. You rescue me, the music is calling me. Will you come along with me? There is no gravity, there is no gravity. Take my hand and let's forget all our worries and regrets. No escapa de este pensano, ladra a tu rebudo pa atrás. We'll escape these troubled times, leave our burdens far behind. Dambo mundo avanza, veo que fuerza, chaltra la lost in a melody. I'm falling steadily. I feel your heartbeat, I feel your heartbeat next to me. You rescue me, the music is calling me. Will you come along with me? There is no gravity, there is no gravity. Oh, I'm lost in a melody. I'm falling steadily. I feel your heartbeat, I feel your heartbeat next to me. You rescue me. The music is calling me, you come along with me. There is no gravity, there is no gravity. There is no gravity, there is no gravity. so much. If any of you knew Portuguese, I hope I didn't mess it up too badly, um, but thank you. Um, and thank you also to my wonderful guitarist, Anani Sawadogo. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. So I co-wrote that song with an artist named Joel Almeida. He's based in Cabo Verde, which is a tiny little island just off the northwestern coast of Africa. So we wrote that song as part of a larger project. Um, it was an album that I released in 2017 called Bridges. I co-wrote songs with artists from different countries and we released them together as a collaborative album. My name is Tanae and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about how that project came to be. For the first 20 years of my life, 
I didn't venture out of the United States. I also didn't think much about how I came to be here or those who arrived before me, both voluntarily and involuntarily. That changed when I landed in Accra, Ghana in September of 2015. It was my junior year at Dartmouth and I was one of seven students doing a foreign study program. Throughout the term, we traveled around the country visiting cultural sites, historic monuments, and we also visited the slave castles at the coast. This trip prompted me to think more about my ancestors um, who were survivors of the transatlantic slave trade. Although it is difficult to track a precise route following their expulsion from Western Africa, we do know that some of them found their way to Cuba, then eventually Jamaica, while others <laughs> ended up in the, the southern United States. So this just made me think a lot more about where I come from and my journey. Um, one of the most powerful and profound things that they carried with them was their music. My retracing of steps back to Western Africa made me think a lot about cultural identity, belonging, and memory. So during a midterm break, I traveled across the continent and I spent a week in Nairobi, Kenya. While I was in Kenya, I connected with an artist named Pet O'Brien. Pedro was performing in an outdoor showcase one evening, right in the heart of the city. He was singing popular reggae songs, and that really resonated with me. He was intertwining Swahili lyrics, which was really interesting. And I just grew up listening to so much reggae, so it was very comforting to hear him singing, don't worry about a thing, even thousands of miles away from home, hearing those words really comforted me. To me, his song felt foreign, yet also familiar. It felt new, yet also somehow already known to me. So after the show, Pedro and I exchanged contacts, and a few days later, he sent me a half-finished song he was writing. His message to me said, you should write the other half. What he had written so far was in Swahili as well as Luo, which is the language of his ethnic group. So I wrote the other half in English, and this interchange was the catalyst for a full album of cross-cultural multilingual music. I basically went through a similar process with six other artists from countries throughout the African continent, and the music that we composed featured a multitude of languages, genres, and musical traditions. Several of these collaborations were carried out virtually as we used applications such as Skype and WhatsApp to facilitate our co-creation. At the heart of these collaborations was a desire to bridge both the literal geographic gap between us, as well as the metaphoric gap of centuries of estrangement. I sought some form of solidarity despite my long-term estrangement from my continent of origin. We worked to create music that was authentic to both of our artistic backgrounds, and that also considered all that has happened since that initial estrangement. The sorrows and joys, the profound loss, the creative resilience, and the hard-fought victories. I have one more song for you. All right, so this final composition is also the title of my 2017 album, Bridges. It encapsulates the spirit of the project, as well as the ethos of my entire body of work. Um, for me, music is always about building bridges. When I collaborate, I aim to cultivate trust and connection with my co-creators. We improvise, we're vulnerable, allowing space for missteps and missed notes. When we emerge with a new, unique composition, we have Im imagined and brought forth something beautiful together. This exchange extends beyond music. It is a step towards conversation, empathy, and reconciliation. On the recording of the forthcoming song, which is the final song on the album, a multitude of voices are featured. Each of my collaborators sings the phrase love as a bridge in their respective language. It also features the voices of the students at a school called the Global Village Project. This school is based in Atlanta, Georgia, and it caters to teenage refugee girls from Somalia, Burma, Ethiopia, and several other nations. I've had the privilege of visiting the school several times and singing and collaborating with the girls. This is the work that I'm passionate about. It centers on welcoming a multitude of voices into the conversation, um, amplifying those who are all too often silenced, and also offering a haven of creativity and belonging. As I've traveled and collaborated, music has served as a guide, a refuge, and a lingua franca. Music has mediated my encounters and aided in forging sustainable connections with people from varied backgrounds. So there's a core section in the song which I would love for you to join me in singing. Um, in this way, your voice becomes a part of this ongoing exchange and our moment of togetherness here today is solidified. So, for those of you who can read music, it's the final two lines in this. It's really not too hard, I promise. Um, <laughs> so, basically you're going, you're going to sing the words, to love is to build a bridge. So you can repeat after me. 
um, just so you can learn it. <laughs> so it's your part is to love is. It's beautiful. To build a bridge. <laughs> Wonderful. And then one more time. To love is. Excellent. To build a bridge. Lovely job, yeah. All right. So you guys know what to do when that part comes. Can you hear me across the distance? You are no stranger to my soul. As a heart beats, a love insistent. Now we arise from our repose. Finally, finally, it's time to heal. across the sea of fear, a bridge between the far and near, and as this moment echoes on, our anthem carried forth in song, this is your part to love is, to love is, Wonderful. to build a bridge, to Thank you all so much. <laughs>